Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other foot, and if you don't mind doing the same thing for me. Yes. 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 Sharp. Uh, no. No. Sharp. Perfect. All right. So do you know what toe I'm grabbing? The big toe. Perfect. So do you know which way I'm going? Is it up towards or me? Towards up. you. Perfect. Down. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that with your other foot, okay? You're grabbing your second toe. Perfect. Down. Up. Perfect. Gas pedal for me. Perfect. Five out of five. Go ahead and go up. Perfect. Five out of five. Go to the left. Five out of five. And sit down. Five out of five. Perfect. So again, go ahead and gas pedal for me. Alrighty. Three. Does it hurt a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So that one's probably a three out of five. Can you go up for me? Okay, perfect. Four out of five. So now go ahead and do it this way for me. That hurts. Okay. Hurts. Okay. Yeah. Two out of five. It's totally okay. Go ahead and go to the left. Alrighty. Two out of five. Check this one. Any pain? Um not right really. here. Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna try my best. Alrighty. Just let me know if there's pain. Mm, that kind of hurts. Hurts? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and bend your knee a little bit. Alright. 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 Right. Well, your range of motion is really good. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and get the nurse and we'll be, I'll be back with you shortly, okay? Okay. Sounds good. They're both equal. And okay. Now I'm going to feel her temporal mandibular bone here. Can you go, yep, side to side, left to down. There's no crepitus there. And then raise your head up a little bit. I'm gonna feel your uh, hyoid bone, or hyo hyoid bone here. <laughs> and then your uh, cricoid cartilage. And then your trachea, it is the midline, and they are all freely movable. Okay. Right, I'm gonna be feeling your, for your thyroid. As you can tell, there's no swelling in her neck. I'm gonna palpate. Can you swallow for me? Okay, none is felt as I palpate, which is good. Okay, and I'm going to check, I'm going to fill your eye lymph nodes now. I'm going to check your interior first. Anterior. Any pain? Mm -mm. Okay, and then posterior. Points as well to help relieve the congestion. And there's also great points on the ears to help release endorphins in the brain, which helps to calm. And we're just gonna start with this point by the arm. And we'll check in with Rachel to make sure she's feeling okay. Do those feel all right for you? Yep. In the center of the forehead to help calm the mind, and this also helps to open up the sinuses as well. And two points by the side of the nose, and these also help to relieve congestion, so really great for seasonal allergies or if you ever have a cold. The ear to help with relaxation to help calm the mind. These points are really great for anxiety or if you have any depression or just general stress in the body. Create overall balance in the body. Help with any headaches that might be associated as well with the sinus congestion that she's having. So then after we place the needles, we let her relax for about 20 minutes. Your head. All right, I'm checking for obvious signs of any lesions or hair loss um, or parasites, and there are none. All right, checking temperature and dryness of the skin. Um, it's warm to touch and dry. Um, okay, I'd rate those both at a two plus. Now I'm going to auscultate with my bill and test for Really? Can you turn your head to the side for me, please? 
Can you blow out and hold it? Okay, and the other side. Same thing. Right, I'm going to move over to the pulmonic, which is the second intercostal space on the left side, and this is where S2 is heard the loudest. Move down the herbs point, which is in the third intercostal space, and this is where S2 and S1 are heard equally, loudest. Right, move down to the fifth intercostal space, which is the um, tricuspid area. And then to the mitral area where S1 is heard the loudest. And then this is where I would hold and for, listen for 60 seconds for the apical pulse. Apical pulse. Right. I'd rate that as at a 2 plus. Come down, check the radial pulse. And rate them both at a 2 plus bilaterally. Right. Check your fingers. Um, there's no signs of clubbing. Um, I'm going to check her capillary. Capillary refills in less than three seconds. Or can you squeeze my fingers for me, please? All right. Grip is strong. Um, all right. Down. Skin is warm and dry to touch. Um, feeling the popliteal artery. Right at a one plus. Right. Scan. All right, testing for edema. There's no signs of edema. All right, feeling the posterior tibial pulse. I get that at two plus. Moving down. Testing the dorsal. All right, dorsal PDS um, pulse. I rate that at two plus. Checking for capillary refill. Capillary refills in under three seconds. All right, I'm gonna do the Davinsky test. All right. Davinsky test is negative. Has um, no lice. Um, her temperature, she is warm. There's no moisture. I'm gonna um, palpate her temporal artery. And that's a two plus. I'm gonna do our temporal uh, mandibular joint. Can you open your mouth for me? And then close it. There's no signs of clicking. Her notes. So, start with the preauricular, the postauricular, the occipital, the jugulogastric, the cemental. Some mandibular and then the submental and then the superficial um superficial cervical and then um can you turn your head that way for me and then the posterior um cervical okay and turn your head the opposite way posterior cervical and then the supraclavicular, you can look back at me now, and then um, the deep clavicle. No signs of edema. Her arms are symmetrical for capillary refill. Lesson. So for her legs again, the color is the same as the rest of the her body skin color. Um, her temp is warm, and there's no signs of moisture. For edema, edema would be rated zero. There's um, 
her hair is evenly bilaterally for a capillary refill. It's less than three seconds bilaterally. I'm gonna check for dorsalis pedis pulse. That's a two plus. Two plus bilaterally, and then I'm gonna do our posterior tibial. That's a two plus. Two plus bilaterally. Okay, so then I'm gonna do the strength for um, the lower extremities. I'm gonna have you press down. Okay, and then raise your feet up. Okay, so strength is um, equal bilaterally. And then, plus bilaterally and then I'm gonna do your and then her brachial is um two so I would like you to say yes when you feel the pin prick. Okay. Yes. 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 I'm working into here as well. So, again, we'll start oh. by squeezing the sides of the fingers. That finger at the tip of I caught it caught in a um, blender. Oh, really? Oh. So, I don't, it's actually, I can't feel the surface nerve skin. Oh, okay. Yeah. On the top of that finger. It's kind of numbish. I'm going to move the joint this way as well. And then move it side to side. Since these areas may hide a skin break, otherwise not apparent. Usually runs between the first and the second metatarsal bones. The posterior tibialis runs approximately 2 cm behind and below the medial malleolus, that is, 
the bony prominence on the inside of the ankle. To feel the pulses, explore these areas with your finger pads, applying gentle pressure. Normally, one should be able to feel both pulses. The absence of the foot pulses indicates peripheral vascular disease. To angle until it buckles. Use the monofilament on the arch and on the plantar and dorsal aspect of the great toe. The patient should be able to feel the monofilament touching the skin. Failure to do so indicates reduced sensation, a common finding in diabetic neuropathy. Evaluate the cranial bones, the frontal, temporal, parietal, and occipital bones, evaluating whether or not there is any depression of any of these bones. We also want to evaluate hair. We want to evaluate the texture of the hair and whether or not the hair is firmly attached to the scalp. Our assessment will then continue with assessment of the lymph nodes, and there are a variety of lymph node chains in the head and neck. We will begin with evaluation of the occipital nodes, and the evaluation is done by a very gentle rolling motion of the fingers as they go over the head and neck. We then come to the posterior auricular nodes, down into the posterior triangle, up along the sternocleidomastoid for the superficial cervical nodes, down deep to the sternocleidomastoid for the deep cervical nodes, back up again to the anterior auricular nodes, and down along the jaw margin to the tonsillar nodes, the submaxillary nodes, the submental nodes, and then moving up back to the anti pressing lightly at first and gradually increasing the pressure for the head follow this sequence and palpate the occipital nodes at the base of the skull post auricular nodes over the mastoid process pre auricular nodes in front of the ear parotid and retropharyngeal nodes at the angle of the mandible submandibular nodes between the angle and tip of the mandible, and submental nodes behind the tip of the mandible. For the neck, follow this sequence and palpate the anterior cervical nodes at the sternocleidomastoid muscle. posterior cervical nodes along the anterior border of the trapezius muscle, posterior cervical nodes deep to the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and the supraclavicular nodes, pressing deeply in the angle formed by the clavicle and sternocleidomastoid muscle. 